Okay, number 18. What is the vertex and axis of symmetry of the parabola? Well, let's start with axis of symmetry first. Uh, there's actually a formula for axis of symmetry. The formula is x equals, right, axis of symmetry, x equals negative b divided by 2a. Okay? Well, let's find out what b and a is. Okay? Well, a is the coefficient in front of the x squared. Find the x squared. If there's a number in front of it, that's going to be a. In this case, we don't see a number, right? but it's known to be a 1 if we don't see any. A b is the coefficient in front of the x. Right? In this case, it's a negative 16. So b equals negative 16. Right? And in some cases, they actually ask for a c. c would be the number without an x, the last term over here, and c would be 63. Okay. In this case, we're only using a and b, so we're not going to use c. Okay. Let's plug it into the formula. Well, b is negative 16. Uh, what is negative b? Well, negative b will be a negative of a negative 16, and that will be a positive 16. A is 1, so we'll just put 1 down here, times 2. Okay. So it's 16 divided by 2. Your axis of symmetry, right, x equals 8. 16 divided by 2. All right, if you look at the choices, uh, the choices with x equals 8 is actually choice 1 and 2. 3 is incorrect because they have negative 8, and 4 is incorrect because they have negative 8. Now for the vertex. Well, for the vertex, uh, we actually need a y coordinate. Okay. To get the y coordinate, we're going to take x equals 8, plug it back into the formula. I right, plug this back in here for x and solve for y. So let's do that. So instead of x squared, we're going to have 8 squared minus 16. And there's another x, so we're going to replace it with 8 plus 63. Okay. Let's solve this out. 8 squared is 64. Okay. Negative 16 times 8. Well, that's going to be... 128 plus 63. Alright, so let's add everything together. 64 minus 128 plus 63. Uh, that's going to be negative 1. Right, so y equals negative 1. And so the coordinate x equals 8, y equals negative 1. That would be choice one. Right, vertex eight negative one. Right. Okay, number nineteen is asking: um, Is this graph, this circle over here, right? What relationship can we talk about it? And if you look at the choices, it's really asking for, right, is this a function or not a function? And the way we test if it's a function is we use something called a vertical line test. Right? We draw a bunch of vertical lines, random vertical lines, that goes through the uh, shape we have here, or a line or curve. And the rule is, if any of these lines, even one, any of these lines touches two or more points on the curve, then it's not a function, okay? So not a function not a function if it's two or more oh, I'm having a little trouble with this pen function here two or more points, okay? So over here, if you notice the graph on uh, this line over here, we have it touches one point and another point and two points. So just by this rule, 
and by this line it touches two point right or more is automatically not a function okay right and if you see more tests there's actually a lot of lines it touches two or more points so it's not a function so and as reason is not a function it's for each x number x number I'll use a different color to highlight this these are the x numbers over here right, for example uh, this line in red right this x number which is let's say three right it has two y coordinates right, it has one down here on the bottom which is around like negative one half and one point way up here that's like seven and any time the when the x coordinate has two y values or more than is not a function right or when you do the vertical line test if it has two points or more then it's not a ver is not a function so let's look at the choices right it's not a function or well, can't be choice one because they're saying that's function can't be choice two and it's down to choice three and four and the correct answer is choice three right because it's not a function because there are multiple y values right there's two y values in this example for a given x value, right? The x value is three, and there's two y values because it hits one point over here, and at the same time it hits another point on the top over here, right? Two different y values. So it's choice three. Okay, question number twenty. Uh, we have uh, different graphs here, and you want to find out which graph actually uh, represents uh, this inequality over here. Uh, one way to do is actually using a graphing calculator and graph it out. Now, uh, if you don't have a graphing calculator, uh, I use a separate trick. Um, the other trick is is just by analyzing the inequality, you can actually tell some characteristics about it. For example, you know, uh, this equal sign underneath the less than sign, the equal sign on the bottom, what that tells me is it's going to be a solid line. Right? If it doesn't have that equal sign, it's going to be a dotted line. So in out of these four choices, right, two of them are solid lines, which are 1 and 3, and choice 2 and 4 are dotted lines. So right away, I can cancel these two out. Right? That can't be the answer. And it's down to choice 1 and 3, just because of that characteristic. Uh, the next portion is that less than sign. Well, less than sign, which is over here, right, uh, tends to tell me that the uh, the shader region, and the part that actually is colored, is facing down more. I right? think about less than numbers that are lower, right, and it gets lower and lower less than numbers. Right, it tends to go downwards. Right, if you look at just the y-axis, numbers tend to go down, down. So out of these two graphs, the left and the right. Which one tends to be shaded down more? Well, it's going to be choice one. Choice one over here is that's less than because it's shaded down more. And the other one tends to be more upwards, okay? Upwards would be greater than, if that's the question, but this one is actually looking for less than. And it's shaded down. And that's a quick way of getting the correct answer if you follow these rules. If not, just graph it out in the graphing calculator, right, and you can actually see which. Uh, a graph is shaded just like the graphs represented here. Okay, question 21 is a simplica simplification question, and uh, pretty much we need to factor the top and factor the bottom. Okay, we have x squared minus 2x minus 15. I'm looking for two numbers that multiply to get negative 15, and the same time adds up to negative 2. And those two numbers will be negative 5 and positive 3. Right? And we just put an x in front of these numbers with the parentheses. Right? And these are the two factors, right? Positive 3 and negative 15. I mean, positive 3 and negative 5 will give you negative 15. And if you add positive 3 and negative 5, you get negative 2. On the bottom, we can also factor x squared plus 3x. And they both have an x in common, so you can factor out an x, and what's left inside is x plus 3. Okay. Right now, let's take a look at the uh, 
there and see what you can cancel out. We have x plus 3 on top and x plus 3 in the bottom. That cancels. And you're left with just x minus 5 divided by x. And that is choice 2.